As the extraordinary lecturer that he is, he will be talking to you guys all about how to present in the real world. Take it away, Adrian. Woo! I had to ask Michael for some help with this a little bit earlier. One, because I needed to make sure that I had a typology that's going to work for this speech. But two, because in tutoring, one thing I have to do is make sure that I am sharp. That I can tell students exactly what the right answer is and how to get to the right answer. One thing I need to know is geometry. Basic geometry. One of the hardest things in geometry is doing proofs. Mm. I asked Michael, what does SAS side angle side prove? It proves congruency. And just like that proves congruency between triangles, tonight I'm going to prove congruency with SAS between this class and delivering in the real world. Public speaking here and public speaking out there. But my SAS is a little different. It starts off with the scenario situation, then audience analysis, and finally, the most important of all, the one that shows that it all goes together, the style. The scenario situation. It first starts off with understanding that in any real world speech, you have an objective. Anytime you speak, it's for an objective. You're trying to communicate to somebody else something. Now it may be that you're trying to make sure that you make a sale. It may be that you're trying to make sure that the registrar's office puts those drops instead of withdrawals on your transcript. It may be that you're trying to get your frat or sorority off of probation. But either way, you're trying to, you're trying, you have an objective whenever you speak. It could either be that, or as simple as telling a lady at a cash register that maybe she shortchanged you, or you, you actually paid with a fine. As simple as that. So every real world speech, every time you speak, you have an objective. A way that you can accomplish that objective is by adapting to the situation by being adept. And yes, in the spirit of public speaking, adept is an acronym. <laughs> Oh. Yes, it is. <laughs> a, you're a tired. When doing any type of public speaking, when out actually giving a speech with an objective, you have to recognize that your attire should be fitting. The rule of thumb is to dress one step above everybody else. <laughs> so if everybody's in their sweats, it's okay to go in some type of casual wear. If everybody's wearing business casual, then you kind of need to step it up and put on the salmon tie. <laughs> no matter where you are, whatever you're doing, remember, this adds a little to your credibility. How you are dressed, I mean, in the real world, will dictate how people begin looking at you, how much credibility they're going to add to you. So when you, go out to get, when you go to give a speech, dress one step up from everybody else. Now from the A, we have the D. D, delivery. Remember the delivery points that we have taught you in here. But not only those, something that you must, a barrier you must break in your head is that energy and professionalism aren't mutually exclusive. You can, you, every professional speech must have energy. You're there to accomplish something. If you're boring, your audience is going to be bored. If you're sad, your audience is going to be the same way. The energy that you have is going to push itself onto the audience and they will begin reacting the same way. Remember, professional speeches must be energetic, enticing, and sometimes even entertaining. E, your environment. Know where you're going to be. Know what it's going to be like. Now, a lot of times, you don't know how the room's going to be set up, and there will be hurdles along the way. You have to be versatile enough so that you can work with these different things that may pop up. Am I going to have a projector? Do I need to use something to help out my speech? Are there going to be chairs right here, or are people going to be positioned all the way around me? Am I going to have every, the stage be set up? Am I going to have a podium? 
what's going to be there. With the environment, also no things to add to that are just knowing the acoustics of the place. Do I really need to shout? I'm actually going to be really close so that my voice carries far enough. Can I tone it down a little bit? Know the environment that you're going to be in. P, props. Props and visual aids. Before even thinking about which props and visual aids to use, you must think, do I even need props and visual aids? Just like tonight, a lot of people came up here and persuaded us. In the past, we've had it, we've had it so that sometimes people were allowed to use visual aids. And we told you, if you definitely need it to persuade somebody, then of course, use visual aids. But for the most part, you don't necessarily need it. Only use props and visual aids whenever they're going to help out your message, when they're going to get your point across. But also think about how you're using them. Remember what we told you before in the visual aid speech. You are the main feature. Everybody remember that? Now everybody say it with me. I just got to feel some energy from the audience. You, you are the, the main, main feature. feature. Not that prop, not the cell phone you pick up, or the new model that you have in front of you. You are the main feature. That's just there to prove your point, to add to what you're saying. And finally, time. Time is one of the most important things in our society today. I know that as students, as people who have worked in industry before, you know, probably have their own businesses, or though they're just trying to start up their own business, time is a very scarce resource. So learn how to manage your time well. Something that's going to happen in this next speech is it's really going to rely on your time. I know tonight we had persuasive speeches that were suggested to be seven to eight minutes long with two minutes of Q&A. A lot of these speeches went about 15 minutes, right? <laughs> we know that time is very precious. How much, you, how much time you take from somebody can really have an effect on how well they're listening to you and how much, how much attention they're actually paying to you. So remember, keep time in mind and keep a focus on time. So remember, in order to get to your objective, you must adapt and be very adept. And now the second point, the one that is the A, is your audience analysis. You must think of how. How much does the audience actually know about what I'm going to talk about? Am I going to give a speech to a bunch of fifth graders about aerodynamics? You might. You never know if you're going to find yourself in that situation. Me, if I go and tutor somebody, I never really know where they're at in the spectrum of how much knowledge they have of the subject I'm about to show them. And you must always get a gauge of that. You must consider that. It requires some thoughtful consideration before you go in and speak. Where is everybody in this spectrum of knowledge? How much do they know? How am I going to accomplish my objective of either teaching them, showing them, or persuading them? Another thing is think of why. Why are you there? Why are these people there? Are they there because they want to hear a speech on the environment? Are they there because you're trying to talk about the new product that you just released? Did you just release a new clothing line and everybody's there to actually see the clothing line? How much detail do you need to give? Why is everybody there? And finally, you have who. Who's going to be in the audience? What kind of audience am I going to speak to? But that actually leads me into my last point, of style, the S, the A, the S. You know your scenario situation, your audience analysis, and your style is going to be dictated not only by all of those, but also by who. Who's going to be in that audience? Where are you going to be? Knowing your environment. Are you about to give the eulogy at a funeral? May not be the best idea to go in with a giant grin showing off your bright and whitey, right? <laughs> Not the best idea. Are you going to be in front of a lot of college students who are here for a public speaking class so you figure why not show off the new Reese's Pieces kicks? <laughs> <laughs> Think about who's there. It will dictate your style. This also lends itself to thinking about the culture of everyone who's there. Some of you I know are international students. 
some of you do internet